Welcome back to California Life. Joining me today is a Hollywood insider who's written for hit comedies like Mad About You, The Drew Carey Show, and Murphy Brown, which earned him an Emmy and a Golden Globe for his work. He's now translating his writing talents from the small screen to the written word, and his debut novel is getting rave reviews. Today's California Life profile is Russ Woody. Thank you so much for being with us, Hi, Russ. Heather. And let's just get right into this, because I'm sure the viewers are wondering. <laughs> first of all, your book is called The Wheel of Noldoid. Noldoid. And I, I don't know, I'd like to make a comparison of maybe The Hobbit a little yeah. bit and seeing this. Okay. So explain a little bit about the book and this character. Right here. <laughs> the, uh, the book is about a uh, spherical city at the center of the Earth that's inhabited by little creatures like this, Noldoids. And they operate the machinery uh, that is responsible for the rotation of the Earth. And this story is about uh, one particular instance where they have to come up from the center of the earth to San Francisco to retrieve a crystal from Golden Gate Park, which absorbs sunlight and uh, will eventually fuel the machinery. Uh, but they're usually about a foot and a half to two feet tall. Uh, they're chubby, and they're unlike Tolkien's hobbits. They look a little like hobbits. Yeah, in fact, a bit. Tolkien got the idea from, he had been to Noldoid in the uh, late 1800s when he was a young boy. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, but uh, the, but they're, the main difference is they are very uh, grouchy, disagreeable, uh, argumentative creatures. Now, you obviously base this a lot in California. Is that because you're a native, or? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, but it takes you through different parts of California, which I, I find interesting. There's a, there's a fabulous high-speed chase from uh, San Francisco to uh, Fresno. Which only happens in California. Yes. I think, you know, LA News is kind of the only news that I see a car chase almost weekly, so. Yeah, we have some of the, we have some of the best uh, car chases, I think, in the, in the country, if not the world. Now, how did you go from writing, you know, hit TV shows to writing a novel, a fiction novel? Well, I always said when I was working on shows that I wanted to, to work on uh, something that, uh, a production that never actually went into production. So when you're doing a television show, for instance, you're there for a month and a half, two months with just the writers. And it's a really, uh, it's a cocoon, and there is very little outside uh, interference. And then at the end of the summer, the uh, actors and the crew come in, and then everything gets messed up. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever worked with actors, you know you know what I mean. Oh, they're horrible, horrible people. But uh, uh, so this is uh, you know this is going off and spending a couple of years uh, living in this little world. Now, obviously, were you a fan of The Hobbit and those you know kinds of stories growing up? Or I you know I I read them when I was in college, I think, and I really I love the book. I'm not a I'm not a sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Or fantasy person, because you know those those people are fanatics about it. Um, oh yes, yeah, they are. And <laughs> now you know my little nephew is is into a lot of those stories, and you know I see this kind of could be a trilogy or maybe something that goes on to the big screen. I mean, do you have those hopes? I mean, I know the book just came out, but is that's that interesting something? you say that. Uh, my uh, uh, and we haven't rehearsed this. <laughs> uh, uh, but my uh, ten-year-old son, when he was t uh, my youngest son, who when he was mm -hmm. ten, he read the manuscript for it and he and he gave me notes, um, which is a delightful experience that for is. any <laughs> of the writers out there. Who, who, uh, uh, but then he pitched me a sequel uh, to this, and you know he was ten, so I kind of like well, I thought, well, this is not going to be any good. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about it, and, I, and it made absolute sense. It, it, it is the story that has to come next. So. If this has uh, any success, I'll, I'll go on and I'll do that. What, what, is there a message that kids will get from the book? I mean, obviously it's a great tale and, you know, talks about all the characters and they're going to get into that, but is there a message you think kids will take away from the book? Uh, for kids, I, I just hope it's a great adventure. Mm -hmm. um, for adults who, um, some of them I think would enjoy it, uh, there is a lot of underlying uh, uh, politics, uh, 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 some of my own prejudices about uh, politics in this country in particular and uh, there's stuff about religion and there's uh, uh, it has to do a great deal with reincarnation and and life and death the noldoids uh, reincarnate with memory so okay. death to them is not a, a big deal uh, when someone they love or they are associated with dies they're not 
they're a little inconvenienced, mm -hmm. and particularly if the deceased owed the money, they're ticked off about it. And headstones, in fact, in Noldoy to have the amount of money owed to a certain people. So is there a little karma involved? You know, if they're good, then when they get reincarnated or? Well, there is, a, the, it goes into a whole thing about their whole system of reincarnation. In fact, mm -hmm. it becomes a, a, a big part of the story as you get into Noldoid. There are three humans who end up in Noldoid. Well, obviously, a fascinating book, The Wheel of Noldoid, and I know you said you can get it on Amazon.com. I wish you all the best of Thank luck, you. and hopefully we see it on the big screen. Oh, I would be, okay. I would, yeah, I wouldn't object. <laughs> Thank you so much for being our California profile.